What is going on guys? We are back playing some more surviving with rotary craft. Now today guys we're going to be messing around with the micro turbine and the bedrock breaker. Now the micro turbine is primarily going to be used to power the bedrock breaker, but to get the bedrock breaker we actually need two tungsten ingots. So although we have tungsten flakes, we need to use the micro turbine along with a couple gearboxes to make a frictional heater get a furnace hot enough to actually cook down these tungsten flakes into tungsten ingots. So we do have a lot of stuff we need to cover today. There's a lot of crafting that we need to do and a lot, just a ton of stuff that we need to do. So we really do have to jump right into it. So the first thing that we're gonna be making is the micro turbine. Now this is gonna use the jet fuel that we have and I did go and make a little bit more so that we could run this, but this is gonna use the jet fuel to output a very high amount of power. So first things first, we can take a look into the Rotary Craft Handbook and go over to the micro turbine and if we click on it, you can see it's rather unique when given a constant supply of fuel, meaning jet fuel. It provides very, very little torque, but an enormous speed and a very high power. So it's almost 2.1 megawatts of power, which is phenomenal. And we're pretty much gonna be using this uh, with a ton of gearboxes for both the bedrock breaker and the frictional heater so that we can get the torque up enough, but that we can maintain a good power. Um, so that should not, that's, you know, it's not super complicated, but you do need jet fuel for it. So that's the first thing that we're going to be crafting and that is going to take a lot of steel. So just fair warning, uh, the turbine itself is going to take eight propeller blades, which take a good amount of steel too. And then you need two compressors, which take even more steel. So I believe these are the propeller blades. These should be the compressors. And then this is going to be most of the other stuff as far as I'm aware. So the reason that this is all not completely crafted out yet is just because I wanted to show you guys on camera just to give you a sense of how much steel it's actually going to use because it uses a ton. So yeah, we're just going to craft. Uh, oh, you know what? Do these, do these need to be crafted? Okay, no, we can craft them right here. So we need eight propeller blades and then we can finish crafting the turbine itself. And so we have the turbine, we have the two compressors, we got the steel, base panel, shaft unit, and now comes the high temperature combustor. So this is going to be using some steel, some redstone, some, uh, or the ignition unit, but it uses these inductive ingots. And we haven't made these before. They do look pretty cool. It's a nice color, but this is going to require the pulse jet furnace, which luckily we can easily work with now. We used it in a previous episode. It's all set up, ready to go with jet fuel, but we need inductive metal blend. Now to make that, it's actually pretty easy. It takes gold flakes and redstone. So that's why that is sitting in here. I guess we actually already grabbed it out. So we're going to need to make four of these. And that's obviously going to give us one extra, but shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, also, hopefully this isn't too loud. Uh, the blazes do take a good amount of time to even land on the ground the first time. So it is it is kind of noisy that it's around here. But you guys always tell me, again, that I hear things way louder than you hear them. So hopefully that's not too much of an issue. It seems to be quieter than the engines. But we need to come over to the pulse jet furnace. We need to throw this in there. We got the jet fuel in there. We don't need to move that reservoir over anymore but we do need to power the performance engine. So luckily for us, we've got a ton of blaze rods now. I was processing, I think I processed like nine in this, uh, and we need to grab some of the ethanol crystals out of here to get this thing to run. And then we can just toss them in there. Uh, we really don't need that many of toss. We can throw the blaze powder in there because that can just stay in there for as long as we want. And then I'll throw like, we'll throw another five ethanol crystals in there. Uh, and that should be good enough, I think. To get this going huh it's not getting any power what is this thing below it messed up oh this is this is messed up right here okay so this needs to be on east and then up there we go oh and the speeds messed up too it's like these changed for some reason okay so I assume these are both supposed to be in acceleration mode. Yeah, okay, so they are supposed to be in acceleration mode. That's really weird. I don't I don't know why those would change like that. Okay. Well now we just have to be careful with other machines. Make sure that doesn't happen. And yeah, this should this should stay cool enough. It should not explode and blow up our base. So we got the three here. I'm just gonna wait for the fourth one to cook down. And there we go. Now I can fill in this floor again. That would, yeah, I guess that would mean a lot of these other things... No, I guess a lot of other stuff wouldn't be having issues. That's so weird that that just reset right there. Is this thing still running too? Okay, so this is running. This thing just got messed up. That's so odd. Okay, well, this will stop running soon enough. Uh, that is 
kind of loud though, but okay, now we can finish crafting the micro turbine, and that'll be, do we craft this over here? No, we craft this again over here. Okay, and now we should be good to go on actually crafting this over here. There we go. Okay, micro turbine. So, this is actually probably the best, this is almost without a doubt the best engine that we will have made to date in this series. So we have the micro turbine, and then we got a couple gearboxes to craft, uh, along with one that I actually already have over here, which is the uh, 8 to 1 gearbox, which we're going to be using a little bit later on. But we're going to be crafting two 16 to 1 gearboxes. Now for this setup, you actually only need one diamond 16 to 1 gearbox. You can get away with using one steel 16 to 1 gearbox, but I have enough diamonds to craft these, so I thought, why not? I don't feel like messing around with lubricate, uh, lubricant or anything uh, when it comes to running the micro turbine through both of these to uh, get the bedrock breaker going. So, now that we have the micro turbine and everything set to go, before we actually craft the bedrock breaker, I want to start making the tungsten. So, unfortunately, this setup does not get it hot enough to actually uh, cook down the tungsten flakes. Like I said, the tungsten flakes, if we go to uh, the actual tungsten ingots that we're going to need, it's going to be the sintered tungsten ingot, and that says that it requires the frictional heater. That's the only thing that can get it hot enough for this, and it needs to be 1350 degrees Celsius and takes 30 seconds to cook down one. So, uh, to get it to 1350, we're going to be using a 16 to 1 gearbox, and I need to remember to grab some of the lubricant over here, but... Oh, that was so weird. It just grabbed double buckets of that? I didn't know you could do that. That's so weird. Okay, whatever. Uh, but we have that, and we can throw it down anywhere in here, really, because I'm just going to break it and move it again. We can just throw it down over here. So we can toss it right there. Now, the micro turbine is very interesting in that it is uh, going to get the jet fuel from the bottom, and we can throw down these first, but we're going to run it in a second. So... We get the 16 to 1 gearbox, and then we have the, whoa, inventory tweaks, you're screwing with me. Uh, you can run it with a 4 to 1 gearbox, but I already have an 8 to 1 gearbox, so I thought I'd use this one. Uh, but like I said, you can run it with a 4 to 1 gearbox. You do need a 4 to 1, you can't mess with a 16 to 1, and then a 2 to 1, it needs to be 16, and then 4 to 1. You can get away with 8 to 1, though. So we got that, and then I believe, I left a couple things upstairs, unfortunately, but... We have the frictional heater that we need, we need the tungsten flakes, and now really quickly we're going to be crafting the uh, engine control unit, and you can see that right here, it looks pretty futuristic-y, and the main thing that this does is it's going to allow us to, see if I can grab, I gotta grab a lever from somewhere, I guess we can just make another one, but it's pretty much going to allow us to uh, turn the engine off and prevent it from running, what am I doing, we need cobblestone for that prevent it from running so right now we wouldn't be bothered by that really loud noise of this down here we could actually swap one of these off if we wanted this to stop yeah if we want that to stop that thing is so so loud so very loud uh, okay well that's that's almost done anyway but uh, this thing actually would we could stop this from running the performance engine we could stop gasoline engines from running and we could just uh it'd be really nice to have so i'm going to add it to a lot of these machines down here anyway but for now we're just going to be using it for the micro turbine because jet fuel although i do have like a full reservoir of it and enough to make even more uh, i don't want to be throwing it around so this is going to go below it and we can pretty much just pump the jet fuel in there so we're going to grab this reservoir which is full and i i can make more so like maybe i should start making more of that just in case yeah, we can throw some of these ethanol crystals in there just to start making a little bit more. But I'm going to break this, and I'm also going to break this too because I forgot to grab the rest of these fuel lines from upstairs. But we're going to throw this right here, and I'm going to break this block right here so we can throw the lever down on this. So if we right-click on this, we can see, if we shift right-click, you can see it's now redstone operated, and it will it's set to 0% speed right now. So if we were to throw the reservoir on there... It would completely fill this up, it would start running, and then I believe we should be able to flip this, and it should it should gradually slow it down, and then eventually stop it. Uh, this one starts kicking on, and it, it starts building up speed and going faster and faster and faster, so it does take time to slow down and stop. I believe it should be doing that right now. It's set at 6.5% speed. 6.5... I don't actually know how you switch it from... Okay, whatever. You know what? We'll worry about that later. What we need to do now is get the frictional heater down. And we need to get a furnace. There's another one upstairs. I keep forgetting. 
there's so much stuff up here that I, you know, I'm not grabbing like the crafting stuff, but we'll, we'll grab all this and the rest of that is going to be for crafting the bedrock breaker. So we need to throw the furnace down right here and okay. So it did stop. That's awesome. So you can see, we've got a ton of fuel in here. We don't need to worry at all. The one thing I'm actually worried about is I don't, I think we just lost all that jet fuel because we're going to be moving this. I don't know if it keeps the jet fuel in it when we move it. I really, I really hope it does, but I'm not sure. But it, so these should both be good with lubricant and it's going to go straight into the frictional heater, which is going to heat this up. And it does take a little bit. So we're going to kick this on. And I've been told by you guys for a while that we should make the angular transducer. And, you know, I, I haven't made it for a while because I was super lazy. But if we click on this, you can see it's really nice. We're seeing the temperature. It's going up really fast. We need to get it again to 100 or 1,350 degrees Celsius. The setup over here gets this to maybe like 500 and some. And, you know, it, it can get really quick smelting for a lot of typical items. Um, from what I've heard, I believe it's 2,000 degrees Celsius is where a normal vanilla furnace will just disintegrate. So be careful, but we don't have to worry about that. So... We also only need to cook down two of these flakes. I'm cooking down all the ones I have now because obviously I'm going to get rid of this setup when we're done here. It's not just going to sit in the middle of the room because I'm going to be using the micro turbine and such for other things. But uh, yeah, just be careful if you're t tossing a ton of power in there using a coil or something. Uh, and it does, like I said, take a little bit to heat up. We can throw the tungsten flakes in there so that they can start cooking the minute it gets to the temperature we need. And while that's going, we can head back upstairs and start crafting the bedrock or I guess we can actually start crafting the bedrock breaker we need what's down here before we can start crafting the bedrock breaker okay well let's see if this is okay it takes a really long time because this is starting to kick up if we if we look at look at the power right now every time I click on it it's it's almost at maximum power but it hasn't reached it yet so it's slowly going up and it'll be there in roughly 0.1 megawatts uh, and it has reached maximum power now. Okay, so it's very close. Now it's just finishing off heating it up the, the last bit. You can see that this thing has turned really, really, it look, it's supposed to look like it's really hot, but it's gotten yellow. It's not really red hot, but you can see it stops at 1350. Same thing would happen if you had a four to one gearbox and this is now cooking down. So it's going to take a little bit of time to cook down two of these and then I'll just leave it running while we craft the bedrock breaker. Um, but surprisingly, we're going to be even, uh, using even more gears for the bedrock breaker and yeah this gets a ton of time out of that that's awesome also i'm gonna come back over here and i'm gonna flip i believe it was that one that was flipped off just so that next time you come to use this it can keep running okay so we got one centered tungsten ingot we gotta wait for the second one to get crafted uh also while we do that i kind of want to come down here and i want to take a look and see how the blaze farm is doing the main thing i'm really excited about is experience because i want to okay so it's doing pretty good it sounded like one should have just gotten kicked down here uh it's got a good amount of xp in there Unfortunately, blaze rods don't drop every time they die. Uh, it sounds like another one just went down there too. And another one. Awesome. So they're making their way down there. And it looks like this finished. Okay, so we can go upstairs and craft this. And let that run, at least for the time being, so it gets one more. So the bedrock breaker is actually surprisingly easy to craft. Does not require that much, except for the, of course, sintered tungsten ingots. So we go to the bedrock breaker and it does require a lot of power and a lot of torque it's a ton of torque but you can see all it really requires is just going to be some base panels some steel some diamonds oh wrong workbench there we go and then the tungsten ingots and some obsidian so we can grab that out and now we've got all the stuff that we're going to need you are going to need a bevel gear because the power is going to go into the top of this but other than that you're just going to need the gearboxes the micro turbine and of course some jet fuel Okay guys, so we're back and I did have to go off camera. I did have to do a ton of gathering resources, crafting a bunch of stuff so that we can get to the point we're at now, which is going to be crafting the gas turbine. So I said in the earlier portion of the video that we were going to be using the micro turbine to actually power the bedrock breaker, but I didn't realize that I was using old data uh, from old wikis and unfortunately it now takes twice as much power to get the bedrock breaker going as the micro turbine can provide. So I thought, you know what, uh, even if there are different ways to get the power for that, I would like to try out the gas turbine. It's actually not super expensive now that we've got the ability to get the sintered tungsten ingots. I did have to get a ton more steel, but luckily I also had to get more tungsten flakes, so it wasn't that much of an issue. Uh, it does take a ton of steel to actually craft though, even more than the micro turbine, obviously because it's better, it gives you a ton more stuff, but luckily we're only going to have to use one 16 to 1 gearbox to get the bedrock breaker going. So. 
Now, all this stuff over here is what we're going to be using for just the general crafting. I did the high temperature combustor crafting and all that stuff off camera this time because uh, we already went through how to make it on camera, how to get the inductive uh, ingots, which I had to go and make even more of those. But now we got to do the crafting for all this, and I'm going to throw uh, the 2 to 1 gearbox back in here because we're not going to need that, and the 8 to 1 just to open up some space in here. And, ooh, I forgot... I, got, I made even more tungsten ingots. I crafted all the ones that we had. So, here we go. We got to make the turbine. This portion is going to be the compound turbine, which is the expensive, uh, one of the expensive portions of this. You are going to need four of the sintered tungsten ingots for this, and then the two turbines. And we already covered how expensive it is steel-wise to make one turbine, so of course making a compound one is even more expensive. And the next portion is going to be a compound compressor, which is the same thing, just using compressors. So another four, and then a shaft core, which is really easy to make. And that should really be everything. Those are the two most expensive parts. Then you have the high temperature combustor. The diffuser just takes some steel, and of course the rest of it just takes some steel too. So now we have the gas turbine, which can use the engine control unit that we have bef uh, that we made before. Um, we can use the same bevel gear. We can use one of the diamond gear boxes. And I did go and make even more jet fuel. I didn't actually make even more jet fuel this time, but I did go and hook it back up to the fractionation unit, which had a good amount of jet fuel in it. Uh, it did seem to stop because we ran out of the netherrack dust, but we have another full reservoir and then some more inside the fractionation unit. So we can grab this reservoir and we actually don't need to grab the fuel line this time because I did remember to bring that with us. So I believe we should have everything now and we can head downstairs. So, the funny thing is, I actually did cut out a good amount of the video, because before, I had come down here, everything was ready to go, and I just didn't think to look at the actual stats required to get the Bedrock Breaker running. I trusted information given to me by the internet and not by the uh, Rotary Craft Handbook, which was my mistake. So, the Bedrock Breaker requires a very high amount of torque and a very high power. So this requires, like I said, double the power that we're gonna be able to get from the micro turbine. So the micro turbine was necessary today for getting the uh, tungsten ingots, but unfortunately, unlike what I said earlier, again, we're not gonna be able to use it for the bedrock breaker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw the bedrock breaker down right here on top of this, and we're gonna rotate it so that it's facing down and then we're gonna throw the bevel gear on top of it. Now, you don't need to face it like this, you could face it from the side going in, I just wanna face it like this because I wanna be able to give you guys a better view of what's going on down here. And now we need to rotate this so that it's going to be going west and down, so down and west, so there we go. And we gotta be pretty careful when it comes to using the gas turbine. So, although this is pretty much the same thing in terms of consuming jet fuel, it's going to use the jet fuel uh, a lot more. It's going to give you less running time per bucket of jet fuel than you're going to get from the micro turbine, of course, because it puts out more power. But it's also dangerous because you can get sucked into this thing. If you walk in front of it, so say it was, we can put it down and not have it running yet. So I guess we can throw down uh, one of the gearboxes right there and rotate this. Does it have lubricant in it? No, it does not. There we go. Okay, so we got lubricant in that one. And now uh, if we were to throw down the gas turbine back here, uh, we can rotate it like this. So everything should be good here, I think. I wasn't sure if this was rotated correctly. Okay, so now it is rotated correctly, 100%. So the gas turbine, if we were to stand here, it would suck us in. And that's not a good thing, because if we go to the engines and flip over to gas turbine, most powerful engine, it is you know able to output a ton of power, all that stuff, yada, yada, yada. But it says, be warned, unless you want to find out what it feels like to go through the blender, stay away from the front of this while it's operating, and neither you nor the engine will fare well. And you can see risk down here, ingestion, possible violent failure if damaged, which I assume means if you are sucked into that, it is going to explode like no other. And also, if we know anything from the Incredibles movie, you don't want to get sucked into a turbine. That was a, a kind of a messed up part of that movie, if you think about it. The guy got sucked. I mean, he was the evil guy, but he got sucked into a turbine. Like, come on. Uh, but so we need to get our fuel line. We need to get our engine control unit. And I think the best way to go about this is to kind of put some blocks down to be cautious. So we'll, we'll go like that, and we'll go like like that, because we don't we don't want to get in there. So we'll do the same thing over here, because it, it's, it's pretty much a line. You don't want to go in the line in front of it. You could use a lot of different things. You just don't want to block actually in front of this thing. We don't want to block sitting right here if I were to shift play, or if I were to just place one down right here. But 
we can throw down the engine control unit we'll throw one block down right here so we can put this down engine control unit fuel line get a lever down here on this thing and it should start up right away now this thing is pretty loud but it's actually not i, I don't think it's that obnoxious so uh throw down that it starts kicking in okay there we go i actually don't know why i got hurt standing over there it was odd uh but yeah you can see it's it's building up and it is now already powering the bedrock breaker it's very loud if i have to go and edit this thing in the end of the video i will uh, i can pretty easily do that but we're gonna hop down here and take a look at this so you can see that the bedrock breaker is slowly grinding away at this block and what the idea is is that the bedrock breaker is going to grind away at this block and it takes uh you know roughly 20 seconds ish give or take depending on the speed you're putting into it per operation i believe it's going to take significantly less than that because we're putting in way more power than it needs but it takes 16 operations to get through the whole block because it's chipping away at it like this it's not just doing it all at once it's piece by piece okay guys so we're back it seems like the bedrock breaker has finished running i turned off the turbine there's a little bit of fuel left in it but i stopped it from running and the bedrock breaker is now finally cooled down enough that it's no longer spinning and it's also run into the bedrock at the bottom of the world so it couldn't break through this one even if it wanted to unfortunately i don't believe there was a bedrock block right below this there might have actually been that it went through but we can see our dust hanging out right down here oh so maybe there was a block down here because it gave us two so we now have two bedrock dust that's not as much as we're really going to want because when we do want to use bedrock stuff we're going to want the bedrock alloy ingot and then we're going to want to use that for crafting, I assume, some stuff. I assume this is what we're going to be wanting. Yeah, so we're going to want to use the alloy ingots if we want to get the pick, which has silk touch, the axe, which is able to chop down like entire trees, all that stuff, or really anything else. We're going to need a good amount of this. So uh, I will continue running this off camera. It's going to require a ton of jet fuel and stuff, but I will continue running this off camera. Again, I do want to apologize, though, that I was a little misinformed at the beginning of the video. Uh, but yep, hopefully you guys aren't too mad about that, but that's going to be it for today, guys. If you found the video informative or entertaining in any way, feel free to give it a like as it does help me out a lot. And I will talk to you guys later.